In one of the previous films, I talked about using diagonal lines in your photos and how they can make the images a little bit more interesting and dramatic. There's another great little compositional trick called leading lines. And these leading lines lead your viewer's eye through the image to reach a certain point. It's like taking a little journey through the photo to reach that point. It's a great little uh, compositional trick used a lot by photographers these days. Now we're at the Pitstone uh, windmill again and this looks quite, quite a nice shot. We've got the windmill on a third. If I just move out of the way this looks quite a nice little scene. The trouble is this area here to the left of the windmill, the empty area, it is not really doing that much for, much for us. So we're going to try and use leading lines to improve the picture. What I'm going to do is change the angle of the camera and pick up. You can just about see it. There's a, there's a, a furrowed track here along with the grass, grass area and we're going to try and pick that area up to use as a leading line. I'm going to uh, change the angle of the camera now, see how it looks. So we're reframing the photo to put the windmill on the left, still on a third, and now you can see it's picking up that ploughed track on the right hand side and it kind of leads your eye into the windmill. I may just actually zoom out a little bit just to pick up even more of the track. But you can see that's made quite a big difference and made the shot a little bit more interesting. Leading lines add depth to photos and make the images look far more interesting. Now quite often leading lines are found on the, on the ground, like in this case, but really they're everywhere, you just have to look for them. Now if the leading line is on the ground or, or quite close to the bottom of the frame, you can usually accentuate the leading line by just changing the angle of the camera, just by lowering it. So if I was taking a photo normally here, I would come down much lower, like this, and pick up the leading line this way. Now if you've got a, a compact camera, it's much easier to do that because you can see the screen on the back of the camera. With an SLR, you quite often have to use the live mode to see the screen on the back of the camera. It's a bit difficult looking through the viewfinder when you're this low. <clears throat> the trouble with doing that at my age is not getting down, it's getting back up again. <laughs> so let's reframe the shot use it, uh, with, the, uh, with a much lower camera angle and see how that looks. We've taken the camera off the tripod and reframed the shot to take in more of the grass, so it's a little bit, a little bit shaky. I'm just going to lower it now, and now picking up that leading line. You can see how this is giving us a much more interesting picture. Here's a comparison of the three images. The first without the leading lines, then picking up the lines with the camera eye level, and now the one with the camera held much lower. You can see that they do get progressively more dramatic looking, and all I've done is move a few feet and change the angle. And without changing any settings on the camera and just thinking about my composition, I've ended up with a much improved photo. Leading lines look their best when there's something at the end of the line to bring the viewer's eye through the photo to that certain point. <laughs> there's really not that much point in having a leading line that doesn't actually lead anywhere. And you don't have to just use leading lines for scenes and landscapes. You can use leading lines in portraiture and when, for example, taking pictures of buildings. Let's take a look at those subjects. You can use leading lines for portraits as well. Here we're in a park and you wouldn't think there'd be that many opportunities for using leading lines, but they are there. You just have to find them and look for them. Here we've got a, uh, a low fence that we can use for a portrait of Ben and we'll, I'll come up alongside the fence and try taking a shot from there. Let's see how that looks. I'm getting very low down and close to the fence. That's going to accentuate the line. You can see how the line of the fence draws you in to the subject. The light's not perfect on his face but we're not really worried about that at the moment. How's this for a cool pose? <laughs> Another great idea for leading lines is brickwork, where you've got the pointing in between the bricks can be used as the lines leading into your subject. We've got a pretty good wall here, unfortunately it's not a very long wall so we've got a sky at the end of it which I'd, I'd prefer to avoid, but let's give it a try and see how we get on. I'm going to get really as close to the wall as I can and try and avoid too much of the sky in the background. 
I've had to put Ben right on the very edge of the picture, but that still looks really nice with those leading lines into his face. <laughs> well, you've seen this scenario before. We're using shutters this time, and these have great lines which we can use to lead into the subject. One of the problems you've got with this type of shot is that you want the subject really on a third or towards the edge of the frame. And to do that, you need to use the half press of the shutter and recompose. And you can find information about that uh, in another film. So let's give this a try. We've also got some lovely light here because we're under the pavilion again. Yeah, that looks great. Those lines really add drama to the image and make it just look a little bit more creative. Remember, whatever leading lines you're using, the closer you get to them, the more impact it will have. That's why I got really close to the shutters there. Another quick, simple idea for leading lines is a park bench. I've got Ben to sit at the back of the bench on one of the arms to get him higher up. And I'm going to use the back of the bench as a line leading into Ben. And I'm going to come down quite low. I've got Ben looking out over this way because uh, as he looks towards me, the sun is going to hit his face and it won't be a good look. Yeah, that looks nice. The line of the, of the bench leading into Ben. Notice how also I've avoided putting his head against the tree because it's quite a dark background. I thought it looked better against the blue sky. Leading lines are also great for buildings and architecture. As well as leading your viewer's eye through the image to the building, they also tend to add a little bit of drama to the photo. This is All Saints Church in Leighton Buzzard, a beautiful church. My daughter got married here a couple of years ago and I've also photographed a few weddings here. I'm going to take a couple of shots. First of all, just a standard type of image and then I'll get lower and pick up this track leading into the, uh, into the church and we'll compare them at the end. First of all, just a straight shot of the church. I'm not even going to attempt to get in the spire of the church because we're just too close. Right now I'm going to get lower and pick up this path into the church. I'm going to get down very, very low. Yes, quite a dramatic difference between those two shots. We've also got the benefit in this particular case of the brickwork on the ground and also the curb stone on the edge of the grass. They look really nice. Unfortunately, looking back at this film afterwards, I realise that it's quite similar to the start of the film with a windmill. So here's a few more examples of, of buildings and architecture with leading lines. Look how the side fencing leads your eye right into this reservoir tower. The lines look even better when they emerge from the corners of the frame. Here's an interior shot of the Ronald Reagan building in Washington. Lines coming in from all directions there, from the ceiling and from the sides. Another interior shot, this time inside a church. Note the lines formed by the edge of the pews and the repeating arches. So that's about it. I hope you found this film useful. Now get out there and practice. It's really the best way of getting these techniques to really sink in. Bye for now.